Hello, this is Candace Brasington with the Little Ladybug Patch again. I am making this video um, because I feel like there's a need for it. Uh, I was asked recently if I teach classes on how to store food um, after you've bought it in bulk. Um, so I'm what you would call a prepper. Uh, nothing near a doomsday prepper. I don't have a bunker or anything like that. I don't carry a gun because, well, I'm clumsy. So, um, I thought, you know what, it might be a good idea to create a video and show you what I have learned and what I do usually uh, to store my uh, grains, beans, flour, um, uh, you know, to last a very, very long time. And I've seen a lot of videos um, on dry canning, is what it's called, but they all use an oven. So you put your dry goods in the jar um, and you put the lids in, in the uh, pan uh, next to the jars and you put all of that in the oven. I don't know how long you bake it for or, or anything like that, but I've never tried it because uh, the way I've been taught is uh, very different and a lot easier and faster. I'm a super busy person and uh, faster. <laughs> if I can get something done faster and easier, I'm going to try it. Um, I got this tip from uh, someone that works at the home, uh, home storage center, which is uh, run by the um, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, or Mormons. Uh, many people know that they uh, believe in long-term food storage. It's, it's very wise to do. And um, so, and they also sell products uh, for long-term food stores to the public. You don't have to be a member of their church. So, for example, um, I have several of these cans. It was actually one of my friends who got me turned on to being a prepper. Um, so, this is a can of rolled oats I bought in uh, 2012. I have the, the years on the top. And this is canned uh, to last about 25 years. Um, and so when I was going to put in another order uh, a few years ago at the home store center, I got to talking to a lady on the phone and, um, you know, was uh, wanting to learn to can myself because you could actually buy a machine to do those in the cans, uh, the metal cans. Well, she told me uh, it's really simple. Uh, you can do it on your own. All you need is a canning jar. You can do quarts or you can do half gallon canning jars. And of course, you want the respective lids that go with it. And you want oxygen absorbers um, sized to the size of jar that you're using. And so all you do is you pour your product in the jar, pop in the oxygen absorber, put the lid on, done. It will self-seal. I mean, so fast, so easy. I have a lot that I'm actually going to be canning. I have several bags of these. These are vegetable soup blends. I've got some mushrooms. I've got some dill seasoning. I have some tomato flakes over there. I'm a little bit behind. So let me just kind of go over. I was gonna make this a short video, but I don't think this gonna happen. I have so much to share, more than I realized. Um, so first, uh, what you wanna do is find a source for oxygen absorbers. This will save your life um, when you're doing dry canning. Uh, I get mine from Azure Standard. You can also find Emergency Preparedness. I think their website is BePrepared.com. Uh, the Mormon Storehouses or Home Storage Centers, they usually have them. I've bought that from them before. Uh, and you want to size them. So, for example, 100 cc's is good for a quart size jar. One of those oxygen absorbers in there is for a quart size jar. The uh, 300 cc's, that is good for a um, one gallon size. And then finally, the 2,000 cc's, those are good for five gallon buckets or five gallon mylar bags. I use those too, not very often, because these are reusable. Mylar bags are usable to a certain point, reusable, excuse me, to a certain point. Um, so one thing you just want to be aware of when you are using oxygen absorbers um, is once you fill your product, you want to wait to open your oxygen absorbers until 
you are ready to, oh, here they are, until you are ready to use them because they will start, they will activate right away. When you cut this bag open, they're gonna start activating. And uh, you wanna have like a jar ready, uh, like a canning jar or, or something like that, a small size that's compact um, to put the leftovers in because what will happen is they'll start warming up. They'll get hot <laughs> and that means they're working. Um, and so you don't wanna keep this open too long um, because then they become useless. Um, so I've repackaged mine. This is like a baby food jar. Or this is, you know, some kind of pepper rings jar. And these oxygen absorbers come with the eye, the little pink eye. And um, this is an indicator. This is an oxygen indicator. And um, it lets you know if these are still good or not. Um, so for example, I've got, I have the little eye in my leftovers here and I've got an eye in this one. And you notice they're all pink. Uh, they, they pretty much match that one. So I know that these are good. And uh, if these turn purple, a bluish purple, they're done. Uh, they're not gonna do any good. Throw my barn on, compost them. I mean, these are safe. The stuff in there is safe to compost, to put in your garden. Um, so that's why you wanna work quickly. First fill your product, get your lids ready, pop in the oxygen absorbers, put the lids on, screw them up, screw them on. All right, so I wanna show you, um, here's an example. So this is something that I have canned recently. This is spelt, and I do recommend for your flowers, your beans, and your greens that you freeze them first. I have two more, uh, no, I've got, um, 75 pounds more of spelt in my freezer um, that I need to also can. And that kills any bugs, eggs, larvae, whatever. It's gonna be in our food. It doesn't matter um, where you get it from. You can't see it by the naked eye. It's gonna be on there. So this kills whatever is on, uh, on the bag, inside the bag, whatever. These are natural products. So um, you wanna freeze it first. That takes care of the sterilization that oven canning would do and killing any any yuckies any bugs so now a way that you know that this they self-seal no heat so i popped them in there the way you know is because i can't push that button down it's sealed i've got the oxygen absorber in there now this this right here i don't have an oxygen absorber in there you can see the difference um and when I get done dry canning these, it's so funny, the first time I did it, I was hearing throughout the night, pop, 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 pop. I was like, what is that? It was my jars sealing themselves. So that was really cool. You can also reuse pasta jars. Now, um, sometimes they seal okay and sometimes they don't. So for example, this one is a refried bean soup dinner in a jar that I've done. I reused the jar. Uh, you can see more of the layers here, it's the same thing. So this is a meal in a jar. Um, this one did not seal very well. This one did, it's not popping. So even these can be reused. Um, so if you find that you have some that, that, maybe there's an oxygen absorber in here, like I just repackaged this one. Um, you know the oxygen absorber is done. It's not doing its job, so you can chuck it, do whatever you want with it. But I'm going to be probably using that rice soon, so I'm not worried about it. And it's protected. Um, and then some things I don't recommend, I've experiment, experimented myself, is um, I have a lot, a whole lot of dehydrated tomato powder. I don't recommend canning these. I recommend buying dehydrated tomato powder in smaller batches that you'll use quickly because they turn hard. I will still use this. I still have some in the bags like these or in bags like this. I will still use this, but to powder, I'll have to blend it, blend it up before I use it. So it's still usable, but it's gonna be fun getting that out. And then also, um, I don't recommend dry fruit. I have about 30 pounds or so of raisins. 
Um, I usually keep and have kept in the freezer, but I decided to can these. What happens is they turn to sugar. Um, they crystallize, kind of like honey in a way. You can still use them. They're not pretty for out of hand eating. You can bake with them, uh, you know, blend them up, do something with them. But um, I don't re recommend doing this with dry fruit. I recommend freezing dry fruit, fruit for long-term food storage. And I, oh, nuts, last thing. I cannot make these videos short. Um, I have done nuts just fine, um, but I've actually moved more towards freezing my nuts than um, canning them. These are my last little bit of nuts that I have left. Uh, just because nuts can go rancid fast. I haven't had any problems with these. These have been canned this way for probably about three years. We just made some peanut butter with them, so they're fine. But um, I've gotten away from those. I also do seasonings and herbs and stuff like that. So this video has gotten way too long, but hey, if you took a class, it'd probably take 30 minutes or an hour. Uh, so this is less than 15 minutes and you've probably learned a lot. I will um, put links below uh, from where I got some of these sources uh, for packaging supplies and then also some recommendations for links for uh, long-term food storage. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or put some comments down below and I hope you found this useful. All right, signing out of Little Ladybug Patch. I gotta get to work. If I can turn it off.